All right, now we're going to be a giant collective agency of people that produce brushes. Okay. Now the reason for this is I'm going to kind of look at it as a workflow. All students will be producing some brushes and we're going to share each other's brushes. Now what happens? Student A makes brushes. Gives them to student B to use. Well, if there's 22 students in the class and we're giving 22 brushes to student A to use, and let's say I have each student make five. Well, that's five times 22 students. And then, yeah, that's a lot of brushes. Think about it. Okay, so as an instructor, I have to kind of uh, facilitate a way so we make this giant classroom library. How do I do that? Well, that's very easy. I've showed you how to make a brush. Okay, that's down pat. Now, I just have to teach you how to be organized with it. So, what I'm going to do here is here's my brush presets. Notice this one chain is in here. So we made one brush. For every brush that you make, I want you to make it with your first and last name. Underscore chain. So I showed you that we produced alphas. We took those alphas and kind of combined them and made an icon and that icon gets translated over to a brush. So that's in the videos. We're going to use that to produce some brushes. The assignment is each student needs to produce five brushes. So I'm going to quickly go over the workflow again because I think it's very important that we get that down pat for the assignment. A lot of students will have a hard time struggling trying to figure out what I'm talking about sometimes. Okay, so let's let's review. Right now, I have the ability to make a sphere. Okay? I can divide the sphere up so it has a lot of geometry. And one of the things I showed you is how to make a brush. So in here, what do we have at our disposal? Well, we have some alphas. I have this alpha right here. Okay. That with the drag rectangle and that with an alpha with the radial fall off on produce a pretty nice brush to share. It's not a very complex brush, but it's a brush. Okay. So what I need is a real-time preview for that brush. First off, I'm going to clone this one because it's got all the settings. And then I'm going to go in here and just kind of go like that. Okay. Next, I'm going to take the MZRGRB grabber. I always add a new acronym every time I say it. Switch it out. Go to modifiers and take auto crop and leave shaded RGB on. Click and drag out. And there I have a real-time preview. Now, what did I miss out of that? Well, I could take the time, and it would look a lot nicer if I first took this and filled the background with something. Okay, so filled the background with a color. And I do that by going to Document, Background. Now, when I use the grabber to produce the icon, it's clear. Okay, or it will be here in a second. 
Remember that has to be absolutely black. Now what I'm going to do is go back now that I have this texture in here. Initialize ZBrush. Launch that sphere. Okay. And that brush should be located in this palette. And this is the hardest part is finding that brush. So here's standard. And I don't really see it. So it's so much easier just to produce it. Oh, and I initialized it. So it probably won't be there. So take that. Take the radio fall off up. Turn it into a drag rack. Test it out. Good. Then clone it. Select the icon for it. The icon is located here. All I do is hit to export that thing. Export that to the desktop. This is called RGB Grab 2. Doesn't really matter what it's called. It gets renamed anyway. Turn it off. There's the icon for it. And now, lastly, I'm going to take the brush, and save it as. ZBrush 4. Z Startup. Brush Presets. Cracked Earth. Okay, so there we go. Now at the end, you're going to have five of them. What I want you to do is highlight all five of them using Command on the keyboard or Shift and compress them. So that's going to say compress five items. And then I want you to rename that one. And that's what I want you to turn in. Of course, it's going to be your name, so don't type your, my name. You'd, you'd be surprised. Um, so there we go. That's how you, this is the file that I want to turn in for the assignment. And that's exactly the steps that you need to do to produce five of them. Alright, when you're done, turn that in by whatever means possible. Uh, sometimes I use a board, sometimes I just use a, a dropped-in folder on my laptop. I will go over how to turn something into me within the classroom. Okay, enjoy, and on to the next chapter.